Tucker Carlson, as you know, is one of the most incredibly dishonest, unhinged political pundits out there. And I think one of the questions that a lot of people have when they watch him is, how is Fox News allowing this to happen? They like to work to make themselves look like an act, you know, actual news agency. Why are they allowing someone to go who's just a full conspiracy theorist and uh, spewing such dangerous rhetoric? And so Mediate actually did a story about this, talking about a guy who went in and kind of an analyzed the inner workings of Rupert Murdoch, the head um, of Fox, and answering that question of why no action is taken to reel in Tucker Carlson. And the response isn't going to be surprising to you, but it's important that we discuss this because it matters going forward in how we handle or think about these types of individuals. So reading from media, I put the question to someone, again, the question of why Tucker Carlson um, is not reeled in. I put the question to someone who has a closer read on the Murdochs than almost any reporter, Jim Rutenberg. Uh, skipping forward, an extraordinary investigation in 2019, which examined Rupert Murdoch and the unimaginably powerful media empire he built across three continents. We also spoke about Fox News, the crown jewel of the family's highly profitable American media arm, Fox Corporation. I asked Rutenberg why he thinks the Murdochs have been so hands-off when it comes to some of the more extreme and fact-challenged commentary of Tucker Carlson, one of the top-rated hosts at the network. As someone who's watched them for so long, I'm at times surprised that Tucker and all the personalities don't get pulled back sometimes, he said, recalling when the network stopped star Sean Hannity from participating in a political event back in 2010. Rutenberg said you can blame ratings and revenues for the current approach. I think now it is a place where the big personalities are getting the ratings, they're getting the revenues, he said. It just seems like the network wants to give people a little more room. So that's what it comes down to. And you're not surprised by that. Of course, they're dealing with all of his incredibly dangerous content and lies because it brings in the viewers. And for some reason, people love it. And that is what gets me to the core of all of this. I think at the end of the day, these figures, while damaging and manipulative themselves, are only going to be successful if there's an audience for them. And that is the problem that we need to understand. Why is it that a Trump could be so successful, that a Tucker Carlson could be so successful, etc.? And one of the things people like to do is point figures in, in directions that maybe don't matter as much as they think it does. So one of the things people say a lot about the rise of Trump is, oh, it's because networks like CNN and MSNBC gave him all this airtime. Well, if everyone was watching Trump and laughing at him, and not supporting him, it wouldn't matter how much airtime they gave him. He wouldn't have become the nominee. But people loved it. And the Republican Party got taken over by this Trump ideology. So clearly, at the end of the day, the reason why these figures are so popular and so powerful is because there is a demographic for them. There's an audience there who's craving this. And that is the scary part. And I know, again, you're aware of this, but uh, no matter if we were able to take down Tucker Carlson and get him, you know, canceled off of Fox News or uh, keep Trump from running in 2024, as long as there is a voter base that craves this, someone's going to pop up to fill that void. And understanding what is the process we have to go through to uh, overcome that. And it honestly just may be winning. I think about that sometimes. If there's always going to be this block of the country that is getting more and more radical. We may just have to resort to politically winning and getting a message that is effective enough as the opposition that we trounce them politically and keep them from the uh, levers of power. But at the end of the day, the Fox News of the world are going to put people on screen who are popular and the politicians are going to be successful who uh, are popular. So. As long as voters like this, as long as there's this base in our country that wants to hear Tucker Carlson lie about immigrants and a peddle the great replacement theory or hear Marjorie Taylor Greene say similar things or Donald Trump lie to their face, then that's what they're going to get. And so that's the question at hand. And it's important to also try to hold accountable the people who are in power because in a way they're also manipulating the audience and propagandizing them. So maybe... 
the far right wouldn't be as far right as it is if there weren't so many of these manipulators. But it also needs to be said that it is the responsibility of the voters or of the viewers. And it's kind of on their shoulders for uplifting these horrible individuals. At the end of the day, it's not because Trump got too much media attention in 2015. It's not because the Democratic Party just put up a bad candidate. It's because a bunch of people in our country are craving whatever that is. And that's so scary to me. And I'm not even proposing a solution. I don't really have one at the moment, but it needs to be known that at the core of all of this, that is what we're facing. And that is what needs to be focused on. And no matter what happens politically or uh, within the realm of these individuals, that problem is going to remain as long as people are getting their information from bad sources and craving this type of rhetoric. Um, and it needs to be said constantly that that's the case.